This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And I want to welcome everybody into another edition of the Primetime Podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. And if you're on Blog Talk Radio, hello. Thank you for checking us out for yet another week. And if you're on YouTube, hey, guys, how's it going? You can see us this week because Brandon and myself are the video podcast for yet another Another week. I know. I know. No, no. I know. This you won't go away. You don't like that don't microphone like that being, being in right front of your there, face. No. You, no. you can push it down, Brandon. It's okay. Make <laughs> sure they can see your wonderful face. But if you guys love these video podcasts, I gotta say it like I do every video podcast. Make sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. It's just an extra way for you guys to help us out to make sure we can do more of these for you guys on different podcasts more than just once a week. But Brandon, do we have a doozy of a show set up today? Basically, it's uh, cleaning house season. Old faces going away, new coaches coming in. We've got Tom Herman taking his dream job for the Texas Longhorns. Brian Kelly, should he stay or should he go? Going to be talking Lane Kiffin. But we're also going to be talking some college football playoff because there's some things that happened, mainly between Michigan and Ohio State. There are a few things that happened. Well, I mean, what a game. That's going to go down as uh, probably the best game of the season, uh, uh, certainly so far. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to top that one, but uh, hopefully the national championship game will. I, I think that uh, that game, though, it, it just really was a true, it was absolutely just a true test of both of those teams. But I'll be honest with you, I was surprised with the outcome. And, and I will also be honest and say I didn't have a, have an opportunity to be able to watch that game at all. I actually didn't watch any college football this weekend. I didn't have any time. I was spending it with family and everything um, over the over the weekend. But uh, kind of offended a little bit. College football this week was rivalry week, Brandon. Or ri- rivalry week. Rivalry week. Rivalry week. Uh, no, <laughs> rivalry. I didn't. I did So I didn't have a chance. So I'll be completely honest and say I didn't have a chance. I've I've tried to do as much as I possibly can to to catch up on all the action, obviously, and I, I tried to keep keep up with it. But you know, it's it's a family weekend, Ricky. You know, I, I was spending it with the fam. Thanksgiving's always always one of the hardest to get that football in, along with that family time as well. I know Thursday, I was very keen on. Hey, don't talk to me. The Vikings are on. For like three hours. Don't talk to me, the Vikings are on. And then it was, don't talk to me, the Vikings lost. Well, basically. (laughs) Basically, it was, don't talk to me, now I gotta drink my sorrows away. You're not a big drinker, don't lie. No, I'm not. But (laughs) Dr. Peppers, man, they they can go down like crazy. But this weekend kind of got me thinking, and maybe this is because I'm a Big Ten guy, and because that's the conference, like if I had to pick any one conference, that's the conference that I would associate myself with. Like, I feel like you're the SEC. Like, if you had to pick one, you're an SEC guy. I'm a Big Ten guy. And I want to start with the Michigan-Ohio State game and kind of branch off into a bigger topic to start the podcast of Michigan-Ohio State played, like you said, a great game. Could go down as the game of the year. Could go down as the game, like the rivalry, the game could go down as one of the best. And we've had a lot of them to kind of look at. It was a great game. It was a close game. Ohio State won. But neither of those two teams, the winner nor the loser, are going to be playing for the Big Ten title game. We have Penn State taking the Big Ten East spot in that Big Ten title game. And with me, that doesn't, like, one of the things that, of course, I can't say it doesn't sit right. Because you're like, well, Ricky, that's how tiebreakers work. That's how Penn State got in. But it's weird to me how the rankings, and we got to wait for the new college football rankings as we record this on Monday. Ohio State's going to stay at two, most likely. Michigan may drop. But now with Penn State being in there, we could have a third factor of, hey, this team and Wisconsin may too, so either of them, may have a conference title to put next to their name that might help them. I have to ask you, are you okay? I, I, Am I, I okay with the loss? I, no, I, not no, really. that's, no, no, not, not that. <laughs> I was going to say, are you okay with the with the title game being Penn State versus Wisconsin? Yes. Do you think that's a good 
title game? Or do you think that that's going to really lose hype with the Big Ten because it, it's not Ohio State or Michigan uh, Lo- going against somebody? Lose hype, maybe. Maybe lose hype because the general football fan may just say, who's like Penn State, Wisconsin? No, it's not going to have the same draw as an Ohio State team would or a Michigan team would. But I'm okay with it being Penn State, Wisconsin because, hey, that's how tiebreakers work. If Michigan wanted to get in, they wouldn't have lost two games. Basically, the way I see it, hey, you wanted to get in, beat Iowa. You don't lose that Iowa game. You are still playing Wisconsin for the Big Ten title game. Ohio State had their shot. They had their shot to beat Penn State. They lost to them fair and square. Penn State did what they needed to do to at least be in the position for this to happen. So I'm okay with it, but I do kind of, I'm on that side of it might lose a little bit of hype because it is Penn State. It is Wisconsin. But for me as a Big Ten fan, I love it because this is the perfect storm for next week. We could have two Big Ten teams in that college football playoff. And that's where I wanted to kind of go with it is that, you know, if this if this possibly loses hype, which I think it could because are people going to be watching it as much because Michigan's not in it, Ohio State's not mm-hmm. in it, and, you know, you have a, a Wisconsin team that uh, I think us on, on this show, on this podcast, thought was dead middle of the season. Mm-hmm. They're going nowhere. Then they surprise us with a couple of big wins. They end up winning that side of the of the conference. And then you look on the other side with a Penn State team that was actually in the same spot. I, I wouldn't say that I ever thought that they were dead. I just would never say that I thought that they were in it. And then they, they come out of nowhere. They have a huge, huge win against Ohio State. And then they just have huge wins the rest of the way along. But do you think that when you look at this and you see the winner of this of this game, mm-hmm. do you think that because some hype possibly could be lost, let's say that Wisconsin wins it. Let's say that Wisconsin wins it. I'm going to mm-hmm. use a theoretical. Let's say Wisconsin theoretically wins the game. Do you think that if things go in the way on how they may go the rest of the way, if Oklahoma can win, mm-hmm. some of the things like that. So we're going to say do like think, Oklahoma, Clemson, and let's, Washington let's say, all win. Let's say they all win. Okay. And you have a Ohio State team that's still in the top four, mm-hmm. that's still a playoff team. Then you have Penn State in, in excuse me, you have Penn State and you have Wisconsin. Wisconsin wins the game theoretically, and then people would think, oh, well, they have a conference championship. They should probably be in there too, but they may not be. How likely do you think that is to happen if they win the conference championship game I think- and don't make it in if things go? the other way how we expect them to with a Clemson win, Washington win, and Oklahoma win. It's more likely to happen, in my mind, it's more likely to happen that way if Penn State wins. If Penn State gets the W, then I could see where, hey, I know you won the Big Ten, but you're not getting into the college football playoff. And what I think this whole college football playoff, like each year there's a theme. We, always, we always. always. We talk had about it. themes all the time. We've always had the theme. And this this year, it brings back a stark just memory of the 2014 season a little bit where the big thing, the big conversation was Alabama was 12-1, and one, Oregon was 12-1, and one, Florida State was 13-0. and oh. That was a 13-0 and oh Florida State team. They were number three. And then you had Ohio State. Baylor and TCU were all up in arms because, oh, we had a better season. We were 11-1. and We should get in. And basically it was, no, you're co-champions. You're not getting in because you don't have that conference championship next to your name. You didn't win your conference. You are co-champions. Then last year we had Alabama who was the SEC champion. Clemson was the SEC or the ACC champion. Stanford in the Pac-12, Ohio State in the um the Big 10, and then Oklahoma with that Big 12. They were able to get in over a Stanford because they had that Big 12 championship and the schedules were a little different. The way I see this one going is if Wisconsin wins, I'm pushing for two Big 10 teams 
to be in. Now I have to ask why? Because if you, it's because the really, schedule. But really quick, no. But, but, but if you're going by schedule, then they they beat a Michigan State team earlier in the season, which turns out to not be that great of a win, as Michigan State only won one game in the conference this season. They lost at Michigan, fourteen to seven, a very close game. They lose to Ohio State, and back to back back to back weeks. That those are those are where their the, the meat of their their games mm-hmm. were. They beat Michigan State, blew them out. They lost to Michigan. They lost to Ohio State. Then they beat Nebraska, not by much. And again, that game is kind of looking like mm, maybe not as big of a win as we thought at the time. And then the rest of the way, they win their games where they beat Northwestern, Illinois, Purdue, and in, in, in Minnesota. And the, the the best game there was Minnesota. I think on the other side of Penn State, Penn State I feel like is better when you take a look at their schedule. Yes, they lost to Michigan. They got blown out by Michigan. Yeah, absolutely, they did. They got blown out by Michigan, but then they beat Ohio State, and then they blow out everyone else on their schedule after that. I go Penn State. Here's the thing that's the most interesting with the strength of schedule, and it's one that you kind of touched on, but I want to look at, and both these teams have it. When Wisconsin played Michigan State, Michigan State was the number eight team in the country. By the time Penn State got to that game, they were not ranked. Does that hold, like, how much credit do you give Wisconsin for that win just because Michigan State had that ranking? To me, and that's why, like, you look at it, the LSU win. I'm Even though LSU season, they fired their head coach halfway through, I'm still giving that as a quality win, although LSU didn't finish as one of the top five teams like they were coming in preseason because that was a big game. That was a neutral site game, too. Yeah, you lose to Michigan. Yeah, you lose to Ohio State, but those were close games. You beat Nebraska, who is the seventh-ranked team in the country. To me, the only win that is a question mark is that Sparty win because on the side of Penn State, you're right. Yeah, they get blown out by Michigan, but they beat Ohio State. So you can say, okay, those kind of and they, offset and the, the each score other. may not show it, but they— they really took it mm-hmm. to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Well, they Buckeyes. were in control that they almost that entire game. They embarrassed Ohio State in that game. The score doesn't show it, but they embarrassed them. I mean, I would have brought up Iowa if both teams didn't play Iowa. Both of them beat them. And the big thing that might come into consideration a little bit for me if we're getting nitpicky is Penn State beat them at home. Wisconsin beat them on the road. So, I mean, I look at that and go... Oh, you were able to go into Iowa and beat Iowa, something that Michigan wasn't able to do, a team that you almost beat in Michigan. So it's to me, these teams are they are so equally matched. I think what it's going to come down to, though, is the committee's going to see more numbers for the Badgers. They're going to see five, eight, four, two, seven, and go, you played a tougher schedule. That's what they're going to do. I don't know. I don't know about that because I think that the people on the committee are smart enough, too, to look at those games. I mean, you could sit here and say, man, Texas, they had a really bad season. But, boy, that first game that they won, <laughs> that was such a quality win against that Notre Dame team. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely not. I think that that's what people would say now is that that Notre Dame team was really bad. We just didn't know it right there at the beginning of the season. We didn't think that they would give up that many points each and every game, but they did. Mm-hmm. I think that that's one thing that you have to look at when you go through the schedule. And you can look at the number that's based with the team. You certainly can do that. But I think you also have to take a look at the number where that with uh, with that team right now is that is is that number still with that team? Is that team still ranked? Does that team even have a chance? Do they even have a shot at the playoffs? Did they do they continue to be good the rest of the season? And I think that now at the end of the season, if we're talking about this in the middle of the season, I think that that's a little okay. Yeah, I mean they're they're struggling right now, but they could get it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, the season is over, and I think that now is when you really take a look at those teams and you go, okay, how good were they really? I think that that's the biggest thing for me, is when you take a look at those teams and see how good were they really at the end of the season when it's all said and done, that's when you really have to take a look and and really step back and and see, was this a quality win or was this just a win? You know what's going to be even more, and I'm going to throw 
another cog into this discussion. You usually do. We've been th- we've been talking about Wisconsin. We've been talking about Penn State. There's one team we have not mentioned. Michigan. What are they going to do in Michigan? We are sitting here this week. We're sitting here Monday. When you guys are watching this, this will be Tuesday. We don't know what the committee is going to do with Michigan. And the reason why I say that is you look at the AP, top 25. They dropped Michigan down to five. They only put them at five. Clemson, Washington, you can go right ahead of them. Michigan is right there at five. Now, Michigan's not going to play. Ohio State's not going to play. Is that going to, how much is that going to hurt either team? Whereas with Michigan, and this is hypothetical. Of course. If, let's say, Clemson and Washington both win. Penn State, Wisconsin, it might be a hard choice. Like I said, if Wisconsin wins, I could maybe see in my head, maybe see two Big Ten teams getting in. I don't think either Penn State or Wisconsin get in if Washington and Clemson win. If Clemson and Washington win their conference title, the way I see the top four laying out after the championships are all but over is Alabama would be number one if they win. Clemson would be number two, Washington would be three, and then Ohio State would be four. And the only reason Ohio State would be four is because the committee would go, they don't have a conference championship. That's why they're four. If they wanted to be really bold, it would be Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Washington. You know what I think is funny about that? That's where we were just a couple of weeks ago Mm -hmm. when everything looked all cut and dry, Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden Clemson went and and lost. Washington lost. These games this past weekend where Michigan loses, Mm -hmm. I I think that it's so funny how if it happens like that, it just circles around to be the exact same thing that we were talking about. Oh, it won't be this just a couple of weeks ago. And what's even funnier to me is you got to think I'm not ta- giving any love to Oklahoma. They're in this too. I was going to say we can't forget about them. Let's say Oklahoma State and Colorado or Virginia Tech cause some magic. They cause some upset magic. The thing that is going to be so interesting is if that committee says Michigan, it was a great game, you're at five. After this week coming into the conference championships, Let's say they go Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Washington, Michigan. The big thing is, if Clemson loses, Washington loses, Oklahoma loses, does then that open the door, not for Ohio State and Penn State or Ohio State and Wisconsin to get in, but do we see a la Alabama LSU, I want to say, what was that, 2009? When they played, they had that close game. Everyone loved it. LSU won. Then they met in the national title, and Alabama spanked them with Trent Richardson. That was not 2009, but you guys know what BCS championship in the Superdome I am referring to. Do we get another situation like that where if they put them at five after the game, then we see both Ohio State and Michigan in the playoffs when it's all said and done. That's only if they put them at five right now. And obviously that's going with a lot of other scenarios as well. But I think if that were to happen, you could not put you could not put that Penn State team, you could not put that Wisconsin team in over Michigan. Not in my eyes. I, I really <laughs> don't think so. But at the same time, if we're talking about schedule, let's go back to where the committee's head might be, mm-hmm. and that's that's a game in and of itself. If Penn State wins, it would be, well, they beat Ohio State. But take a look at it. It would be if Penn State wins, they beat Ohio State. Not only did they beat Ohio State, but they probably played a tougher schedule than Michigan did. We continue to give all this love to Michigan, mm-hmm. and it's because they're from the Big Ten. They play a, a, a very uh, – the, the Big Ten is a, is a very well-respected conference, a Power Five conference and everything like that. But really, when you take a look at it, only two teams that were ranked when they played, but you have to also look and say Colorado. That's what I was going to say. Was is very good now, and they ended up beating them forty-five to twenty-eight. However, they were down twenty-one to three at one mm-hmm. point in that game. Penn State's and also they came ranked back. now. Penn State's right now. So I think that that's it. Could get really dicey. Actually, I think if Penn State were to win that and everything else worked out the way that we're talking about mm-hmm. right now, of course, folks, we're all talking hypotheticals. Yeah. It probably won't even happen. But 
But it's a but, fun but, conversation but you have to, to have. But you have to talk about it because it's college football, so the likelihood that it could happen is almost 50-50. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how fun college football is. But I think that if Penn State wins that game and Michigan is at five after this week and you have Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson in, in Washington in there and one of those teams loses – it will be interesting to see, is Penn State going in? Is Michigan going in? Do they, out of left field, mm-hmm. bring in Oklahoma if Oklahoma wins? Because they'll say, well, Oklahoma won basically won the Big 12 if they were to win. And we already have a Big 10 team in there. Penn State, you won. Your, your conference championship game. But Oklahoma, we're throwing you back in there because you don't have a conference championship game. You won your conference. We already have a Big Ten team. You're leaping over. You just never know. I mean, it goes back to Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. You put Texas A&M in there, and that was a shock. So, uh, you know. Sean all got his panties in a jumble about that, too, that Washington wasn't in. Why is Texas A&M in? And look what happened. It all worked itself out. But then, boom, Washington was in the Mm -hmm. week after. But I I still think that there's got to be somebody on that committee or a group on that committee. And I don't know how how many people are on Mm -hmm. on there. It's probably a very— Condoleezza Rice is on the committee. No way. She is. Is she really? Yeah, she is. I really don't know who the committee's made up of outside of now Condoleezza Rice if you're not pulling my leg. I'm not pulling uh, my leg. She really is. I was going to say, I I feel like— there's got to be at least a small group on there that's willing to kind of go out on a on a limb with some of their thinking. I think that there's got to be. Otherwise, everything would be boom, 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 boom. Just so everyone knows, in case you're sitting at home like you don't know either, um, here are the people on the committee. I'll read them off really I would have thought that would have been a secret list. You have uh, Kirby Holcutt, the director of athletics from Texas Tech, then Barry Alvarez from Wisconsin. We have Jeff Bauer from Southern Mississippi. We have Herb Dometti, or Dur- Durametti, Central Michigan head coach, former head coach. Um, Thompson Jetson, a former vice president of the NCAA. Bobby Johnson, Jeff Long, Rob Mullins, Dan Radica- Rad- Radakovich, Condoleezza Rice, um, Steve Weisberg, and Tyrone Willingham is your selection committee. That is your selection committee for each and every week in the college football playoff. See, you learned something today, Brandon. I certainly did. I really didn't. I, I thought they would have. Th- Condoleezza Rice was the only one I knew of. How odd. I have no idea why she's on I that. just find it odd. I'm surprised Michelle Obama's not on the group. I don't think she watches enough college football. I'm not sure I know she does. Condoleezza Rice loves her college football. Well, so do we. Why aren't we on it? <laughs> I don't think we have enough money to be on the committee. Well. Not enough net worth, Brandon. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. But okay, that's very interesting. But I, I think that there's still I think there's mm-hmm. gotta be there's gotta be a group on there that's not afraid to kinda go out on a limb and be say bold. Hey, you know, we already have this. But look over here and look mm-hmm. what's going on over here where not a lot of people are thinking, then all of a sudden, like I said, out of left field, boom, there's Oklahoma back in it. Well and it, one last thing, this is what I wanna kind of end it before we finish with the final question of how many Big Ten teams will be in the playoff? Two teams that we said, like, oh, Washington and Oklahoma, if they lose, count out their conferences. Is there a crazy world where, because I'm looking last week, of course, they could move up this week, they could move down, depending on what the committee goes with. Is there a crazy world where Colorado, because they would have beaten Washington, and OK State, because they would have beaten Oklahoma, would they be able to get in? And I'm going to shoot the Oklahoma State one right in the foot and say no to them because then they'd be co-champions with Oklahoma. I think Colorado would be the one that we would look at and go, now do they get into the discussion because they have the conference championship and they beat Washington. I was going to say, too, is the fact that uh, when you take a when you take a look at um, – those two teams, and you put them kind of side by side. Mm-hmm. If things were to to work out with Colorado beating Washington, then Oklahoma State beating Oklahoma. I, I'm number number one with mm-hmm. you. Uh, you you cannot 
put Oklahoma State in there. So even if they are able to do that, uh, there's still too many hurdles to get over. They wouldn't be able to do it. I don't see them getting in. Uh, But then on the other side for Colorado, I think that when you take a look at them and they're, they've, they lost to Michigan early on in the season. They lost to USC um, kind of later on uh, in, the, in the beginning part of the season, but kind of the end of the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and they lost them. It was a close game. But then ever since then, they have taken care of business. Uh, they beat Arizona State, Stanford, UCLA, Arizona, and then the most important games here at the end, they beat Washington State. They beat Utah, and if they were to beat Washington, that's when you start to kind of have a discussion about, all right, are we now looking at the Pac-12 after having such a down year, I would say, actually with all of their teams? Mm -hmm. Uh, And are we looking at the Pac-12 now and saying, okay, we've got to open up the door for one of these guys. You know, Not to say they're coming in, Mm -hmm. but to say the door could possibly be jarred open for them. But that's, again, only if they win. But... Then if they if they're able to win, I, I mean you could have you could have Colorado there, you could have Oklahoma there, you could have Penn State there or Wisconsin, you, Michigan's right. I mean you mm-hmm. have about four or five, maybe even six teams that are right on the cusp. Who do you pick? Who do you pick? How do you do it? And then you know are how do you how do you justify one team and it's very hard to i understand it's very mm-hmm. hard to you know there's somebody there's some team that's going to feel like they got slighted there's f- some team that's going to feel like well our 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 record our resume looks a lot better than this person's over here we get into that all the time in college mm-hmm. basketball but college football too i mean especially with this new format you you look at it and you go well what did we have to do to get in then oh well you had to do this well, not necessarily, because you, you look at last year, you had to do this. You look at next year, you may have to do this. So it gets to be very, very tricky. So what I would say is just win all your games. Here's the last question I'm going to ask you. Okay. Are we going to get two Big Ten teams in the college football playoff this year? Ricky, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, we don't, um, because I, I, I just – I, <laughs> I I just don't think that it happens. I think that it's going to happen in a different way. I think that there's more of a likelihood, and I'll say this, I'll, I'll be one of those guys that goes out on a limb. I'm going to say there's more mm-hmm. of a likelihood that Oklahoma gets in over a second Big Ten team. Well, and how I see it is I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to be hopeful for a yes because I think it'd be cool. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that uh, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, I think will be tough. That might be the one where we see an upset. I think Washington's going to win, especially with Colorado suspending. I just saw on ESPN they suspended two players ahead of their big Pac-12 championship game. I think Washington's got that in the bag. They'll get in. Clemson, although I'd love my second favorite team in the Hokies to get the win. I think Clemson gets the win. I think we're staring at Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson and Washington, no particular order, being our playoff teams. Yeah, I think that very well that could happen. But at the same time, I I, I think that uh, we saw we saw Washington get very uh, have a true test against USC. Mm-hmm. I think that we could see Colorado bring a very good test against them. We saw Colorado play really two good games against Washington State and Utah. Washington blew out Washington State. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even difficult. Uh, but they had some troubles with Utah, Colorado had a close game with Utah. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a close game. Maybe Colorado Utah is Colorado, just a tough opponent. Colorado and Washington, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be mm-hmm. close. I think it's going to be close. I don't think that either team's going to blow one another out. Watch, of course, I'm saying this, one team will win by 40. <laughs> but it, it just always seems to happen like that, right? But I think that that's going to be close and do not do not count out Clemson closing their eyes and uh, forgetting that they have some actually a lot at stake because Clemson this year they have been a team that uh, you hasn't look, been laser focused. They have not this season. Last year, and, and, and I mean you can tell me too. Do you think I'm wrong? I, I think that really Clemson last year it was every game you came, you you were focused, you felt good about that team. You they were going to win. Job. It, yes, absolutely. It, it feels different this year. It just feels, especially earlier in the season when uh, when Deshaun Watson was like, uh, yeah, you I'm know, not a dual threat quarterback. Yeah, I just, you know, and then the media and stuff like that. If you can't handle the media now, how are you going to be when you're in the NFL? Especially I, if you go to New York. 
yeah. Well, especially go to Cleveland. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I think that you know, right now, this is a team that needs to be focused for this game. And 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 Dabo Sweeney, uh, you know, saying uh, again, I don't know how big this is mm-hmm. looming, but uh, you know, saying his players did not use any racial slurs, mm-hmm. you know, towards South Carolina and stuff like that. How, are you focused? You have to be focused. Mm-hmm. This may not be a, a team. Focus on the game ahead. This yeah, may no. not be a team that's going to the playoffs mm-hmm. in Virginia Tech, but this is a team that could certainly oh. hold you out of going. Upset worthy. Absolutely. Upset worthy. That's why they need to be focused. They better be ready. My two big upset watches are the Big Big Ten, are the Big 12 title game and the ACC. Those are my upset alerts because both of those games are going to be good. They're going to be, could be, upset city but this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below in the comment section. What do you guys think? Two Big Ten teams going to get in. What do you see in the college football shakeup when we get to the conference championships this week?